Friends, colleagues, trustees, welcome to the Weston Hotel for the MGPO 10th anniversary dinner. Thanks very much for coming. For those of you who don't know me, I'm David Torciana, the head of the Physicians Organization and your host for this evening. I know the traffic out there is terrible, and I know people will be uh, coming in uh, over the next little while. We've delayed the start of the evening a little bit, and I know that also the timing could have been better, uh, that there's a, a baseball game on later this evening. We are going to show the game, so nobody has to leave. I know Ronan's going to leave because he's got tickets, but nobody has to leave to go watch it at home. We're going to show it on the big screens behind us. But we won't actually start the game uh, until the event has been concluded and we've finished up with the program. Uh, we may miss a little bit of the first inning or two, but hopefully uh, we'll be able to move things along and not miss much. I, I did a little mathematical equation to, to uh, try to explain as to why it was more important to have this dinner than to watch the beginning of the Red Sox game. It's been 86 years since the Red Sox have won the World Series, but it's been uh, 194 years since an MGH physician has been recognized for clinical excellence. So I think we have a, a little bit longer streak to break. The program will be uh, pretty quick and crisp. I hope it will be entertaining. There's going to be three segments. Uh, before dinner, Dan Ginsburg and I are going to make a few remarks uh, briefly about the history of the organization and several of the people who have been central to our success. After dinner, over dessert and coffee, we'll show a video, a short video, uh, about the MGPO, and then we will present the Brian McGovern Award for Clinical Excellence. The program will conclude uh, by 8.30, leaving lots of times for, uh, for socializing the Red Sox and dancing. Dan, Dan Ginsburg is going to now lead things off. Please welcome the President and Chief Operating Officer of the MGPO. Thank you, Torch. You can't see anything from up here. It's kind of unusual. Um, good evening. Ten years ago, in 1994, I was working as a senior manager at the Boston Consulting Group. At the suggestion of Sam Thier, I came to the MGH and met Jerry Austin. In the course of interviewing for the job as the chief operating officer of the MGPO, I met with 21 people. It's kind of the way the MGH does things. Uh, including all the members of the group of physicians that had been meeting early Friday mornings in Jerry's office to hammer out a common vision for a physician's organization. Their names are in the 10th anniversary report on, your, on the place in front of you. You might want to take a minute and, and take a look at it. Their vision was for a physician group practice governed by physicians. It was based on the belief that an empowered physician organization was the best model to meet the immense challenges of the healthcare environment. We recognize them as our founders, and we owe them our thanks. I would now like to call particular attention to the contributions of Jerry Austin. Jerry was at the center of the formation of the MGPO. At the time, as the, those of you who were there I'm sure remember, there were significant tensions between the chiefs and many of the clinicians. There were huge tensions between the physicians and the hospital. As many of you well know, Jerry has a gentle grandfatherly demeanor. He's sensitive and, and empathetic. He is tireless in his willingness to discuss an issue until all sides have had their say. And that can be a long time. <laughs> he is trusted. These attributes allow Jerry to chair the meetings of the founders and to bring the chiefs and clinicians together. They also facilitated the acceptance of a governance model in which the physicians and the chiefs elect half the board of trustees and the board in turn selects the CEO. Jerry, working with Sam Thier and later Jim Mongan, also substantially improved the working relationship between the physicians and the hospital to the point where it is now one of our greatest assets. 
Creating a powerful new organization is not easy, but with Jerry's many talents, his perseverance, and his willingness to, to lend his name and his clout to this organization, our first five years exceeded all expectations. Jerry, if you would stand up, we'd like to thank you. When Jerry stepped down as CEO, we were fortunate to recruit Peter Slavin to replace him. Peter was then serving as the president of Barnes Jewish Hospital in St. Louis. Our recruitment of someone of such high caliber and high position whose roots were at the MGH were a very positive sign of just how far the MGPO had come. The CEO of the MGPO, had been, as had been hoped, was established as the partner of the president of the hospital in running the medical center. Peter quickly emerged as a highly effective advocate for the MGH physicians. An example of this was in the negotiations with the major payers. He worked with the staff to analyze the contracting data and lay out a clear and compelling case for physician fee increases. He lobbied effectively within partners and won key support as a result, the partner system made physician fee increase, increases its top priority in the payer negotiation. And the result were the first physician, e the first fee increases our physicians had seen in a decade. Peter is bright and confident, passionate but not emotional, and quick on his feet. He listens well, is willing to take risks, and is able to make tough decisions. There were, these were vital attributes for he helping the MGPO progress in its still formative years. Peter, if you would stand for a moment so we can thank you. That brings us to our current CEO, and those of you who know Torch won't be surprised to hear that I was specifically instructed not to comment on Torch. I'm going to briefly ignore that advice because I want to assure you that the MGPO remains in the best of hands. As you know, in 2002, David Torchiana stepped up be to become the MGPO CEO as Peter moved over to be the become the president of the MGH. Torch is a renowned, respected, and beloved clinician. He's the straightest straight shooter I've ever met, and he's incredibly bright and an all-around great guy, and it's a pleasure for all of us to work with him. And I'll now turn the podium back to Torch. Thanks, Dan. Um, I'd like to take a couple more minutes before we get started on dinner uh, to recognize three more people, uh, folks that have been stalwarts of the PO since its inception. And uh, all three of these, I have to say, reflect well yet again on Jerry Austin's judgment because, because he hired all three. Uh, first one working chronologically is Ann Dubitsky. Uh, Ann is... Uh, <clears throat> As a, a Wellesley grad and a graduate of Harvard Law School, uh, she practiced law for nine years as a litigator uh, before she came and worked at MGH with the uh, MGPC. Uh, working from a home office in the attic of her house, she helped to create the MGPC uh, with Bob Boyd, Skip Fuller, Sam Kim, John Levinson, and Dave Ratner uh, to put physician contracting, a heretofore unknown concept, on the map. As all of you know who have worked with Ann over the years, uh, she's uh, brilliant, hardworking, energetic, uh, but especially really nice to be around. She's a, a great problem solver. Uh, she uh, transforms fuzzy ideas into functional reality with, uh, with uh, enormous skill. And uh, along the way, she's uh, found time to raise uh, three kids with uh, her husband, Jonathan. 
For the past 10 years, I've met Ann every, mor uh, every other Thursday morning at 6.30 a.m. for the Managed Care Committee uh, in, the, uh, in the conference room on Bullfinch 2, and it's been a real learning experience to me. Um, Ann Dubitsky has taught me a lot. We're lucky to call her our colleague. And Ann, would you please stand up and uh, be acknowledged. Next, uh, Dan Ginsberg. Dan uh, worked with Boston Consulting Group to help plan and structure uh, the, uh, the organization that would become the MGPO. Once that assignment was finished, uh, he was offered the chance to work uh, in, the, uh, in the PO uh, from a little uh, small closet up on, uh, on uh, White 5 next to Jerry Austin's office. Dan is a Harvard undergrad and has a Harvard MBA. Uh, he worked in the consulting world for nine years. Uh, his wife was a dad, or his dad, excuse me, was a doctor in Newton. Uh, he and his wife, Laura, who's here tonight, are raising two great kids, uh, one of whom I gather occasionally has purple hair and demonstrated at the Democratic National Convention. <laughs> Dan has been a, a, a great friend to the doctors of the MGPO. He does things on our behalf that basically we wouldn't have the guts to do ourselves. He, he has a great insight and determination. Uh, and uh, I would say, in general, uh, physicians are lousy business people. Uh, but let me assure you, uh, Dan is not. He has a talent for putting together the right team and an intuitive touch for managing people. He focuses on the in, uh, oversight and feedback functions uh, sets expectations, established goals, uh, makes the organization work, basically. Uh, these talents are incredibly important in, uh, in the amorphous administrative world. Uh, and uh, without him, we'd be sunk. And if we're lucky, he'll stay with us for the rest of his career. Dan? Last, uh, last uh, individual to be recognized is uh, Jim Heffernan. Jim, uh, Jim came to the PO from Cleveland. Uh, some of you may have heard him mention that at times over the years. Um, he has Massachusetts roots, however. He uh, earned a BA in uh, science, uh, biology, and chemistry at BU, and an MBA from the Sloan uh, program at Cornell uh, in hospital administration. He's worked over 20 years uh, in healthcare. Uh, before coming to the MGPO as our CFO in 1995. He and his wife, Kathy, are the parents of three uh, energetic and expensive college students. <laughs> I, uh, I haven't grasped as yet the world of the balance sheet or the budget in a cruel statement. I've learned a little, though, and I understand that it's an art, not a science. Jim uh, practices his art superbly. He's respected by his peers throughout partners. He's fair and even-handed. Uh, he has an incredibly good and compassionate nature and strong moral compass, in spite of what you'll see tonight in the video where he's led away in handcuffs. <clears throat> he also has a, just like Dan and Ann, he has an incredible belief in the mission and the, and the importance of the PO every day. So uh, Dan, or uh, Jim, excuse me, if you'd please stand and be recognized. So uh, these three great people are the core of the team uh, at the PO since it began. Obviously, it's all the doctors uh, and uh, clinicians in this room that deliver the care uh, that makes us uh, uh, so successful. Uh, and we're very grateful to all of you and for all of the energy and uh, uh, volunteer efforts that you put in to make the PO go. Um, that concludes the pre-dinner program. Uh, enjoy the meal. We'll be back in about 40 minutes uh, for the video and the McGovern Awards. Um, I have uh, two things uh, just to uh, stick in as impromptu comments. Thank you very much to Tom Lynch and Malika Marshall. They uh, obviously have great, uh, great presence and talent. Uh, They're very nice. Um, secondly, um, Senor October, um, 
David Ortiz hit a three-run home run. And, uh, and the, the Sox are up four zip in the uh, first inning. <laughs> okay. Now, um, I'd, I'd also like to thank a couple other people, Nancy Gagliano for her leadership uh, on physician uh, work-life issues. She initiated the award we're about to present, and uh, she and uh, Deborah Colton put a lot of work into, into that uh, video that you just saw and uh, putting this uh, dinner and the anniversary report together. So, so thanks to those two as well. <laughs> now, uh, now we're uh, going to do the final event of the evening, which is the Brian A. McGovern Award for Clinical Excellence. And I'd like to begin by acknowledging uh, two people who are here with us in the audience tonight. Uh, first, uh, Dr. Ann Jennings, Brian's widow. Uh, thank you for coming tonight, Ann. She's sitting with us here. And uh, Brian's mom's here, too, Josephine uh, McGovern, who's made the trip over from Dublin. She's also sitting at table for us. I'd like to think that I had a special relationship with Brian. I know lots of people in this room feel the same way. I was uh, schooled in Ireland. I went to secondary school in Ireland, and I played rugby against the school that Brian went to. And we came on the staff at Mass General about the same time, and we always had a lot to talk about from our prior life. Uh, we shared a lot of patients together. Brian was an electrophysiologist, and I was a cardiac surgeon at the bottom of the totem pole, which is right where the electrophysiology patients fit in. So we took care of a lot of patients together. In the aftermath of his, of his terrible death, many of his patients and colleagues praised his blend of intelligence, dedication, good nature, and a sense of humor. I remember one of the speakers at his memorial service noting that he had a way of making you feel important which was a great thing and a great attribute because Brian was never one to act very important himself. So when we started thinking about uh, having this dinner, uh, we decided that this would be an ideal occasion to honor Brian's memory and identify a few clinicians from our midst to emulate these qualities that I've just described. We can't lose sight of the fact that for all the advances in technology, and procedures in medicine, it is the selflessness and the kindness that we show our patients and each other that ultimately sets the Mass General apart. In that spirit, I'm pleased to present the recipients of the Brian McGovern Award for 2004. Response to this process has been tremendous. We received 163 nominations for 91 different clinicians. Uh, you can see the list. Um, on your program at the table. Since this is the first time uh, that we're giving such an award at Mass General, the committee that made the selections thought it would be appropriate to name more than one recipient. So tonight we've selected four of our colleagues for this honor. And we thought a good way to acknowledge each one and to present them would be to have one of their colleagues uh, from the staff uh, come up and read from the nominating letters uh, that each one of these individuals received. We're not going to read all the letters, just excerpts. So the first one uh, will be read by Britt Nicholson, the MGH Chief Medical Officer, and he will read about our first award winner. Britt, if you'd come up, please. Uh, it's a real honor for me to be able to, uh, to do this. Um, and I'm delighted that this physician is one of the recipients of the Brian McGovern Clinical Excellence Award and honored that Torch gave me the opportunity to read selections from some of the many nominations written about him. He's one of the physicians whose presence on the floors extends from early in the morning to late at night. In his quiet and humble way, he is always thinking, problem solving, and expressing his thoughts and plans for a patient in a kind, considerate, as well as a compassionate way. His dedication to his patients in time, 
effort, and energy is a visibly powerful instructor to trainees and to me personally as a colleague. He demonstrates that excellence is internally driven and his attitude sings out loud and clear that what is best for the patient is what should be set for our own personal goals. He advances the cause of house staff training in ways both programmatic and personal. Tales abound of how he will providentially appear at the side of a struggling intern at 11 p.m. to offer his support. He has reinvigorated house staff teaching and successfully revamped many aspects of the inpatient and outpatient house staff experience. His expertise and his work ethic make him an indispensable consultant to physicians throughout the medical and the surgical departments. His trademark bedside manner is soft-spoken, is thoughtful, and unhurried, even late at night or amidst the commotion of an intensive care unit. His patients are intensely loyal to him. His humility, compassion, clinical brilliance, and service to the hospital make him a fitting recipient for this award. I wholeheartedly agree, and it gives me great pleasure to announce that Hassan Bazari is one of the recipients of the Brian McGovern Clinical Excellence Award. <laughs> to read about the second uh, McGovern Award recipient. We're supposed to have Alan Goldstein. Did you make it, Alan? He did. Good. Alan, I was told earlier on, had been paged in to see a complex uh, ECMO patient, but it sounds like he sorted things out. Uh, come on up to the stage. Thank you very much, George. I'm so pleased to have the opportunity to read my letter nominating this physician for the Brian McGovern Clinical Excellence Award. Spending a few days with this physician in the hospital is all you need to understand why he deserves the award. I met him 11 years ago as a surgical resident rotating on pediatric surgery. That exposure to a superb physician led me on my own path to becoming a pediatric surgeon. He's one of the most dedicated, compassionate, and committed physicians that I have known. He cares so dearly about his patients and is so committed to their long-term well-being that he follows them closely long after their operation. <clears throat> his, pa his patients and, his fa and their families clearly appreciate this and truly love him. Every couple of weeks, I see a family come to our clinic just so the child can say hello to him. Another remarkable attribute is that he is always available for patients, regardless of the time of day. He never says no when a patient needs him, whether for his surgical skill, his clinical wisdom, or simply for compassion and his hand to hold. In addition to these wonderful clinical attributes, he adds immensely to the MGH community as an outstanding teacher of our students, residents, nurses, and medical staff. He deserves this award in recognition of his genuine commitment to clinical excellence. It is my great pleasure to announce that my friend, colleague, and mentor, Daniel Duty, is one of the recipients of the Brian McGovern Award. Schuler will make our next presentation. David, are you here? Here you come. I am thrilled to have the opportunity to read from my letter nominating this physician for the Brian McGovern Clinical Excellence Award. In my opinion, he is the most compassionate, dedicated, and superb physician in a hospital filled with compassionate, dedicated, and superb physicians. 
My experiences with him have been from a number of perspectives, as a student, as a house officer, a fellow, a colleague, and as the child of two of his patients, which is, of course, not a coincidence. <clears throat> Three stories. First, when I was a medical student, I was working up a patient at midnight. Sitting at the nurse's station, I asked my intern a question. This physician who was standing nearby spent 20 minutes teaching me. We had never met before, and it was not his patient. Second, as an intern, I admitted one of his patients, and we agreed I would draw her blood at 3 a.m. to check a test. My beeper went off at 3.20. I assumed it was the lab calling in an abnormal value. But no, it was this physician. He had sent his, set his beeper to 3.15 so he could check the value. He wanted me to know that it was okay. It's a true story. Third, my dad, who is his patient, had a concerning neurological symptom, and this physician sent him to a specialist. An MRI was performed the night before a long weekend, and this physician was away visiting his parents out of the country. The doctors who performed the MRI were unreachable and provided no information about the results. From his visit to his parents, and without any prompting from us, he called the radiologist, got the read of the MRI, and then called my dad to make sure we had received the reassuring information, everything was okay. He assumed the other doctors had already provided it, actually they had not, but he wanted to make sure that we didn't have any unanswered questions. While I have focused on his compassion, this physician has more clinical knowledge and better judgment than anyone I have ever met. He may be the only physician I know who is uniformly beloved and respected by his colleagues in medicine, in surgery, by the nursing staff, the medical students, the house officers, and, of course, all of his patients. As an exemplar of all that makes MGH great, he is the best nominee I can imagine to honor the clinical and humanistic excellence of Brian McGovern. And so it is with great joy that I ask John Godine to come up and receive the Brian McGovern Clinical Excellence Award. Thank you, David. Um, finally, I've asked Isaac Schiff to make some comments about our fourth about our fourth winner tonight. Thanks, Isaac. Okay. Thanks, Torch. I'm deeply honored that Torch asked me to make some comments about this recipient. I wanted to share with all of you an incident that I witnessed some time ago that may tell you as much, if not more, about this physician's humanity than any of her more public accomplishments. About 15 years ago, not long after I myself came to the MGH, I was called in late one evening, one summer Saturday evening, to see a patient. When at about 9.30 that night, I got to the old Vincent II inpatient floor. I was surprised to see this physician, then an oncology fellow with Dr. Skip Fuller, sitting at the nurse's station with her husband, David. I asked her what she was doing in the hospital at that time, since I knew that she was off call. She replied that she was attending a patient she'd seen for a number of months who had advanced gynecologic cancer. The woman had no family or friends, and she told this physician her sole wish was not to die alone. The woman, therefore, asked this physician if she could be in the room when her time had come. And so this physician was keeping a vigil on a summer night out of the limelight honoring a solemn commitment to a near anonymous patient. The patient died early Sunday morning, this physician at her side. I'm sure that you'll appreciate why this incident has been visibly embedded in my memory 
all these intervening years. I am delighted to announce that Dr. Anne Catherine Goodman is one of the recipients of the Brian McGovern Clinical Excellence Award. Congratulations to all four recipients. Together, these are a wonderful illustration of MGH clinical excellence and the enduring spirit of Brian McGovern. That concludes our formal program. Please enjoy the evening, stay late, cheer on the Red Sox, and enjoy the band. Thanks for coming.